Welcome back. Bruce Porter joins us now for this week's Dollars and Cents segment to learn all about our money. Thanks for coming in. Good to be here. Good to see you too. All right, here is today's question. What's wrong with using a portfolio of blue chip dividend paying stocks and using those dividends for retirement income? Is there anything wrong with that? It's a good question. Uh huh. So now, let's first thing let's do is establish why what? do they call it a blue chip stock? Exactly. What is that? A blue chip in a poker game is the most valuable chip mm -hmm. on the table. Right. It's got the highest value. So a blue chip company, it has, um, it has a reputation. High mm -hmm. dividends, uh, high uh, revenues, mm -hmm. good uh, stock performance. They can weather economic times. Mm -hmm. They can basically survive when other companies might be more volatile. Exactly. But what we got to remember is, uh, they're going to be volatile to mm -hmm. add time. So using dividends, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, I think we need to look a little further, mm -hmm. though. So we're going to go to the screen. We're going to look at historically what, what does dividend, uh, blue chip dividends and blue chip stock values look like. So when we look at that, we simply are going to go back and we're going to look at segments, 2000 to 2002. We all remember, right? Mm -hmm. Minus 43.1%. It was a tough time. Tough, tough, tough yeah. time. Then we have a recovery period, 03 to 05, mm -hmm. 42.47. So we have a six year period that were flat. That you really didn't do anything because you just gained back the ground you lost. Right. So if right. you had a blue chip portfolio with dividend paying uh, uh, income, you probably either had a reduction or a lower amount or a flat amount of income during that period of because time. Because some companies cut their dividends during times Absolutely like that. Absolutely they do. From 06 to 2010, 25.8. Mm -hmm. From 11 to 15, 58.4. Mm -hmm. So they can perform very well. Sure. So now let's go back 15 years. We got an average rate of return of 5.57 and an average dividend rate of 3.64. So now... Mm -hmm. While we did an analysis of performance a couple of weeks ago, blue chips do perform at a higher level. That's obvious. Plus, they generate that dividend. However, you got to remember in a poker game, nothing's guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Blue chip or otherwise, stocks are designed for growth and accumulation. They are not designed for a secure retirement income stream. Mm -hmm. So I think we just have to evaluate what's our objective. Now, there's nothing wrong with using that philosophy. That's a lot of people do that. Mm -hmm. But you got to understand the downfall from, o from 2000 to 2005, there, it was flat. It was flat, but not all companies will cut those dividends, or will they? They can, not all do. Mm -hmm. Dividends sometimes will be okay, even though the value of the stock is decreasing. So, you know, even though economic times are tough, what's going to happen, though, dividends can and probably will come down during those tough times. Boy, but over the course of years, I've known people who will literally, a good portion of their income comes from the dividends. Because That's right. they've invested well over the course of their lifetime. That's right. When those get slashed, however, that can can be a tough pill to swallow. It can be tough, but I think it's just important to understand that they're not guaranteed. And if you're relying on security of income during retirement and as we get older, I think you've got to weigh the pros and cons mm -hmm. of possibly looking for a different tool that is going to absolutely guarantee income and at a higher level than the average dividend rate. Uh, I wasn't that impressed with that average right. dividend rate, and that's the top 10 blue chip companies. That's their average rate, and I wasn't that impressed with that. All right, so ask your financial advisor if you have a question on that. Bruce Porter, thank you so much.